I ask unanimous consent that the Senate resume legislative session and be in a period of morning business with senators permitted to speak therein for up to 10 minutes each. Without objection. Since I made that unanimous consent motion and I'm going to be speaking for longer than uh, uh, just 10 minutes, I ask uh, unanimous consent to speak for whatever time I might consume, which would probably be in the neighborhood of 20 minutes. Without objection. Yesterday, the Ways and Means Committee sent a letter to the IRS requesting the President's tax returns. Last night I had a chance to read that letter. And I have to say that if you take it at its face value, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Consider the reasons that are stated in that letter from the Ways and Means Committee for requesting the President's tax returns. It states that the committee is conducting oversight of the audit process that the IRS uses to evaluate presidential tax returns. Currently, the IRS examines the President's tax returns as a matter of policy, simple policy, but a review isn't required by law. Democrats of the Ways and Means Committee have said they're now looking into whether the current IRS policies of auditing the president is enough or if congressional action may be needed. Democrats have even been talking about making IRS audits of the president's mandatory every year even though, now understand that, even though the IRS does that every year and have been doing it for a long period of time. In a press release, a Democrat member of the Ways and Means Committee said that he has a duty to examine whether congressional action is needed to require presidential audits and oversee that they are done correctly. Ask yourself why that member would be saying that. I, for one, haven't seen any evidence that the IRS has suddenly changed its policy under this president, meaning President Trump, or that it's conducting a less thorough review of President Trump's taxes than it did of previous presidents or that it hasn't conducted a review at all. So why are the Democrats considering these changes to the tax code now? Why didn't they raise the issue under President Obama, or President Bush, or President Clinton? The uh, answer, of course, is nothing has changed. There's no reason to believe that the IRS is doing any less due diligence in its review of President Trump's taxes than it has for any other president in our memory. The letter also states that the committee needs to know the scope of the audit that the IRS conducts when it looks at a president's tax returns, that it needs to know whether there is a review of underlying business activities reported by the president. If Democrats are truly interested in finding out the level of scrutiny given to, the, to a president's tax returns, why not simply just ask the IRS to describe its audit procedure? That's a very straightfor straightforward question. And I'm sure that Commissioner Reddick would be happy to oblige with a straightforward answer. Why is there a need to see President Trump's tax returns in order to get an answer to those questions? I want to give you a hint. There isn't one. The letter also states that the committee is looking into how the IRS is doing its job of enforcing tax laws in a fair and impartial manner. In a statement yesterday, the Ways and Means Committee said it especially wants to know whether or not audits of presidential tax returns 
are being fully and appropriately uh, being conducted. Along those lines, in addition to asking for President Trump's tax returns and those of, of his businesses for the last six years, the Democrats have asked for information on the status of all audits of those tax returns that have been conducted. It sounds like they're planning to conduct their own review of the President's tax returns to see whether or not the IRS has been doing its job. Now, there's a problem with that. The IRS audits more than a million tax returns every year. And while audits of the president and vice president might happen automatically, the audit process that is followed for them ought to be the same as it is for everyone else. Every member of the Ways and Means Committee knows that as well. In members' remarks yesterday, they said the committee has a responsibility to conduct oversight of the tax system to determine how Americans, including those in elected office, are complying with the law. In other words, the president and the vice president ought to be held to the same high standards as every other American. Not a different standard, the same standard. And there's no reason to believe that this isn't already happening. Democrats haven't offered a shred of evidence to shed, suggest the IRS hasn't done its job auditing President Trump, his taxes, or anybody else's, for that matter. And by the way, if Democrats are really so concerned about enforcement, then why not ask the Treasury Inspector General to conduct a review of the IRS audit process. Well, I want to tell you why they might not do that, because they're not concerned about oversight of the IRF's enforcement process at all. What they are interested in is using their oversight responsibilities to collect as much information about this President's finances as they can get their hands on. And that is really the bottom line, isn't it? This letter from the House Democrats doesn't make sense when taken at face value because you can't take it at face value. Democrats say they're interested in the tax returns of all presidents when they're really just interested in one, President Trump. If the effort to get the president's tax returns isn't part of a grand reform effort, as they'd have us believe, then what is it motivated by? I want to tell you what it's motivated by. It's motivated by the Democrats' intense dislike of this president. It's motivated by their frustration over losing an election that they thought that they'd easily win. It's motivated by their desire to use all of the resources at their disposal to find something, anything, to bring this president down. Just take a look at how this whole effort to request the president's tax reforms has unfolded. That'll tell you a real story. Democrats started making calls for the president's Trump's, for President Trump's to release his tax returns while he was still a candidate during the 2016 election. At the time, Democratic calls for the release of his tax returns were clearly just a political attack, not a policy issue as they now want us to believe. Secretary Clinton said, quote, there must be something really terrible in those tax returns, end of her quote. Her communications director used the issue to chide then-candidate Trump for, quote, hiding behind fake excuses and backtracking on previous promises, end of quote. In his speech before the Democratic National Convention, 
President Clinton's running mate questioned then whether then-candidate Trump had been paying his fair share, at once calling for him to release his tax returns and asking, quote, Donald, what are you hiding, end of quote. Since the election, these calls have continued, as you see yesterday. Democrats have just come up with more inventive excuses for making these calls, although I suspect the underlying political reasons are the same today as they were in 2016. Consider how those reasons have changed over time now. Not long after the election, at the beginning of the last Congress, 93 House Democrats signed a resolution of inquiry directing the Secretary of Treasury to turn over the President's tax returns. That request was for his tax returns to be provided to the full House of Representatives and not the Committee on Ways and Means. The House Democrats portion of that resolution committee report signed by ranking member and current chairman is filled with complaints about the president's refusal to release his tax returns, none of which ever mention reviewing IRS audits or even inquiring about IRS audit procedures. In that report, Democrats say that the president has, quote, rebuked over 40 years of tradition, end of quote, by refusing to release his tax returns. They say that the president's tax returns should be released because he has a vast domestic and international business empire. They say they should be released because he is, quote, not an average American. They say they should be released because he is President of the United States and has the power to sign bills into law. And that is supposed to serve as some kind of justification for demanding and releasing his tax returns? Well, I can tell you, the law does not support that argument under Section 6103 of the Federal Tax Code, the tax returns of all Americans, even including the President of the United States, are considered to be private information. And without an individual's permission, tax information can't be released except under the most limited of circumstances. And let's not forget that our tax code reads that way for a very good reason. When Congress reformed the modern IRS privacy law, that was in 1976, not long after President Nixon left office, Nixon had used his power over the IRS to target his political enemies. And Congress, by passing that law in 1976, wanted to make sure that that never happened again. Congress was determined to put protections in place that would prevent any kind of abuse of that IRS power in the future. Congress wanted to ensure private tax information was never used for political purposes ever again. But if you strip away all of the pretense and trace this current effort back to its roots, that sounds an awful like what's happening right now with the efforts by the members of the Ways and Means Committee. I stopped listing listing them, but Democrats have had plenty of other reasons in the past for claiming to need President Trump's tax returns. In 2017, Democrats also said the President's taxes should be released because he stood to benefit from the tax reform that Congress passed and the President then signed into law. 
apparently because the president is wealthy,